Hey, this is Alan Powell from Anthem Lights. You're listening to Dispatch Radio. All right, we're going to stay on War Room, folks. This is a great film that comes out on Friday. I know we've talked about it. We've interviewed a couple of the creators. The Kendrick Brothers were on with us. Karen Abercrombie's on with us. Now we have T.C. Stallings talking about the wonderful film. T.C., my friend, thank you for fitting us in. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Let's jump right to it. I know you had worked with the Kendrick Brothers before on Courageous, and uh, it's just a, another powerful project. What was it like uh, getting back into the audition process with them, getting a chance to work with them again? Uh, actually, it was it was quite interesting because um, you know I first heard about you know the Kendricks and, and Solar Power the films by sitting in um, Fireproof in 2008. You know I'm down front and uh, when 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 Fireproof went off and I looked back and saw the impact that it had on that audience. That's when I turned to my wife and I said, <clears throat> excuse me, I turned to my wife and I said. You know, if I'm going to do film, these are the these. This is what I want to get started. This this is it. Their film has such a great impact. I said I'm going to work with the Kendrick Brothers. I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to work with them. And I, me and my wife laugh to this day because um, you know next year they come out with Courageous, and um, I heard that they were going to be auditioning some talent down in Florida at a competition called the Actors, Models, and Talent for Christ competition down in Florida. So, man, I, I got down there as soon as I possibly could and entered that competition. And uh, I ended up placing, uh, I was a runner-up for the uh, top overall male actor in my division. And they, and they didn't even see me there. Like they, they didn't even notice me down there because they were looking for the younger kid roles down there. Uh, so I ended up writing a letter to Erin Buffett because I saw her down there in Florida. And she turned that letter over to Alex and the producer and her dad, who was also a producer on the film. And then that's when they uh, immediately gave me a Skype interview because I couldn't get to Georgia in person because it's so late in the process. So I interviewed on Skype, man. And, uh, and after that, they, they you know loved to know what I was doing and they offered me the role of DJ. So the process was grueling and it took me a little while, but it was great to finally end up being part of the top of them. So did they seek you out to uh, return for War Room, or how did that process shake out? Man, the story for that is amazing. To tell it to you in short, if you look either online, um, on like YouTube, and you look up a, vid the, uh, a video that says, PC tries to impress the Kendricks with gymnastics, or something like that. Like, it'll come up and you can just talk to that title. Um Here's the story behind that. After we shot Courageous, we were rapping. It's the last day. War Room is not even a thought at this point. Um, the Kendricks uh, like to do funny segments for the DVD for uh, Courageous. So they said, hey, TC, you can do some flips and stuff, so let's have some fun. Um, me and Alex are going to be up talking on the camera. Um, you get about 15, 20, 30 yards back and just start doing all your flips and stuff. And um, we're going to kind of say, hey, we're thinking about – our next film, and we want somebody who can do some stunts and some tricks, and is very athletic, but I don't know if we got anybody like that around here. So that's what they're doing up front, right in front of the camera. I'm right in the background. You can see me flipping around, flipping around. I start flipping towards them. I land about 10 yards back and walk up, and I say, hey, guys, how you doing? And then they say, hey, man, let's go talk to this guy over here. And they just leave me standing there by myself. Uh, so that was just a fun video when and then so you hear it is a couple a couple years later we're in Mexico City and Alex comes to me and he says I got the idea for my next film um, I don't really know the whole script yet but I know the title's gonna be a War Room and it's gonna focus on prayer and it's gonna be an African American family and I couldn't think of no one right now to pray about taking this role but you and so that was like a year later and then two years later he called me and then he said uh he officially offered me the role so that was that process but it was just so weird to look back at that fun video that's still online that's still on the page of dvd that was just kind of pointing to this moment and we didn't even know it would really be it was great well we're going to track that down see if we can link to that maybe include it at the bottom of this interview folks you can catch that and the end of the film ends with that the end of the film he answers he answers the questions i guess some of the flips and the acrobatics that you may see at the end of this film may actually be tc stallings not a not the stunts or tricks or anything like that right you're there uh doing your thing that's right. That's right. Every man, every stunt that you see in that film, every last one of them, um, I personally begged them to let me make sure I, I did everything myself. So um, no CGI, no stunt doubles. <laughs> I did it all myself. So uh, thank God for the, the athletic ability to uh, to pull off some of the things some of Jordan has to pull off. 
you know, whenever you look at the script like this, you look at the final script and the power of the pages, and that's what what, what Karen said when she was talking about just the words and, and, and so much there that needs to be said for today and this time. Can you speak to that a little bit? I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way, but give fans a little bit of idea of how timely War Room is going to be for them. Well, for me, number one, there's this uh, black man um, who is, is, you know, the, the, the patriarch of the family. Um, and usually the black man isn't portrayed in such a way that you see this Tony Jordan character. Because Tony Jordan in this film, War Room, has an incredible arc of emotions um, that you don't usually get a chance to see on TV. And I mean, uh, for example, the, the, and this is what was, was really a draw to me. He starts off very, very prideful. You will not like Tony Jordan in the beginning. You just really, you, you won't. Um, as it starts to go on and you see um, this movie starts to challenge him uh, to make some changes in his life, he makes the type of changes that most people, you know, well, I won't say most people, but uh, several people, a lot of people probably wouldn't make, like changes of integrity um, that he could easily get away with if he just kept his mouth shut. But in this film, he decides to take the risk of something that could actually get him in, in some big trouble by just being truthful and honest, and he does it. That's kind of against the grain, against the culture. Most people just say, hey, keep your mouth shut, you know, get away with it. Um, apologizing to very, very young children, his daughters in this film, but because of the way that he treats them and things like that making everything right with all the people that he wronged. Like this is some, and he struggles with this. It's not easy. And to take that challenge on and actually do it rather than to take the easy way out and just have bygones be bygones. He, he, he didn't do that. And so for me to get a chance to portray a character who does that in this day and age where it's more about, you know, get yours, um, you know, keep, uh, um, um, you know, we're kind of prideful in a lot of areas where, you know, forgiveness is not at the top of the list. Um, humility is not at the top of the list. And then here you got this black guy um, who's showing all of this. Um, and then he's, he's, he's humbling himself before the Lord. He's humbling himself before his wife. So I, I jumped at the chance to, to show this positive uh, way of uh, responding to people, responding to society, responding to your problems. Um, I just absolutely was just, just floored at how it was written and the portrayal that I get to do for this guy. Warroomthemovie.com, folks. You can get a lot more information there. I know we've covered a lot of this. We'll, we'll be posting a lot of that in my review. I guess they're going to let me lift the embargo for me, TC, on Friday. I guess I could actually put out an actual review on Friday, but uh, it is uh, a great film. You will definitely enjoy it. The power of prayer is presented in a way you haven't seen before in a very uh, amazing way. And a lot of revelations that happen that can definitely strike you in your personal life. And, you know, TC mm -hmm. gets to really portray. He didn't even touch on this, man. You're like the Wolf of Wall Street, the first part of this movie, man. You're like totally like, you know, the guy we love to hate. You're like Gordon Greco. <laughs> I mean, oh, talk man. about bursting yeah. another stereotype that doesn't get a lot of credit. And I, you know, I hate this, this, you know, if, if, for instance, when the game stands tall was bagged because of the way they portrayed the black cheerleaders on the other football team. And I'm like, but that's based on a true story. What, what, what? Right. it's just, they look for all the wrong things in films, especially faith-based films. And this one, you really kind of have fenced them in with like, you know, now what are you going to say? It's kind of how I came away with it. Right, right. And, and, and I know I'm not naive. I know people will always, you know, find uh, something um, to, to kind of knock on. But no, I mean, this, this, the only thing, and this would be so interesting. So I, I'm sitting in the theater. Um, I've seen this, you know, several times at different screenings and things. I'm, I'm with different audiences. And the interesting thing about this is some people, um, like I said, when the, when the characters do things that, that um, you know, most people would say, oh, I wouldn't have did that. Oh, I would have kept that a secret. Oh, uh, -uh I wouldn't have did. No, I didn't. so like those things would seem unrealistic for the common person. Um, maybe it is for the common person, but for the person who has been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, they will take whatever risk is necessary to please God, to please the Holy Spirit, to please Jesus. And so that's it's so funny to, to listen to the, the uh, surprise and shock when Tony Jordan makes the choices that he makes in this film because um, it's, it's, it's not humanly, humanly or in the flesh realistic, but it's spiritually realistic. And Amen. so, you know, what a lot of people like to call cheese, 
Christians call reality, man. We That's we right. will do these things when we're transformed by the Holy Spirit. Because uh, I see some things Tony Jordan did that in my flesh I certainly wouldn't have done. But in my spirit, the guy the guy that I am now, T.C. Stallings, would definitely model what Tony Jordan does in the later part of his life in this movie. It definitely pushes back on the hypocrite label and some of the stereotypes and stigmas that we get as a uh, Christian community. And, uh, and you can visit him, tcstallings.com. You can follow him, I'm sure, on Facebook, Twitter, all that social media stuff. And uh, warroomthemovie.com, folks. It opens Friday. We'll get a lot of these links up there, make it easy for you to track everything down, get out and see that show. Uh, TC, thank you again for fitness into your schedule. Hey, thank you. And guys, pray for me because I get to add author to my resume. I've signed with Broad Street Publishers to, um, to write a devotional that focuses on, uh, it kind of tells my story about how I, um, it's basically chronologized the last four years of my life, which were all about just pursuing my God-given purpose. And, uh, and then there's a 14-day devotional to teach you and show you how to do the exact same thing. So it leads with my story. And then, uh, then you go into the devotional. So I'm really, really excited about that. And um, I'm excited for all of you guys who are going to see War Room. And thanks for the support. And, uh, you know, thank you, Brandon, for having me on.